Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. So in this video, I'm just gonna kind of give you a rundown on kind of like a synopsis, I guess, on what do I think about Aftershot 3 that I just did three videos on and my thoughts, I guess, my final thoughts, my impressions on it. So before I get into that, I wanna tell you that a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, I did a versus video. I compared Adobe Lightroom, that current version at that time, with Aftershot Two, the old version. And I took a look at UI, I took a look at speeds, a bunch of other things. If you haven't seen that video, go over here, check that out, it's very interesting. But the UI was very important to me at that time. The UI was kind of clunky, but the biggest problem that I had with Aftershot 2 at the time was that it did not allow you to do watermarking of your images. You had to use like a third party plugin to do the watermarking. It was very kludgy and I didn't like it. So I didn't use the software very much. But as of version 3, that has all changed. I guess Corel listened and they put the watermarking into the software itself. So if you take a look at a couple of videos ago when I did some of the exporting and watermarking, um, you can see the watermarking is really, really good internal to the software now. Thumbs up to Corel, thank you for doing that because now I've been using your software all the time. So I've been using the 3.0 and now 3.1 on all my laptops as well as in studio. I'm still using Lightroom for a lot of the old work, but whenever possible, I try using Aftershot because it's just simply quick. It's just down dirty. You just get the job done. Regarding the UI, with Aftershot 3, the UI is definitely better, but it's my personal opinion. I think that they can massage this a little bit better. They need to spit shine it. Okay. It's just not there as of yet, but it's getting there and it's definitely better than 2.0. So, UI is important, but what's really important is the actual performance, the speed. And as you can see in a couple of videos ago, I literally had a dance directory of 576 images in it. And I was able to, with Aftershot, just go right in there and just start editing, right? Go in there and do my one stars, two stars, three stars, whatever it is, and edit right away. Whereas when I use Lightroom for this, I have to bring in all 567 images and it's slow and it's lethargic and it's doing its thing before I can really start editing the photos. And if I do start editing right away, it's kind of slow and it's just bogged down, right? That doesn't happen with Aftershot. That's one of the things that I really like. The other thing that I like about Aftershot 3, the new version, is that it has now this internal method of updating camera profiles. So if you take a look at this tab, Get More, and you see this, it says camera profiles, plugin manager, and image presets. If you click here on camera profiles, you can see a bunch of profiles that I have not installed as of yet. Now, what that means is, and I'm sure you guys are aware of, if you do not have a camera profile, for example, in Lightroom, that's specific to a brand new body camera, that means that you will not be able to use the raw files that come out of the camera. You're gonna have to use like a converter that converts the raw files to like DNGs and this whole big mess to really edit those those photos. Now, a lot of times with other editors, what happens is they do dot releases, right guys? And those dot releases take forever sometimes, right? So the way Aftershot has done this, whenever a new camera comes out, you can go here and literally for free, download any one of the profiles. It goes and installs it into the software and then you just restart the software and now you have the profile in the Aftershot 3. That means you can immediately start editing your raw files. I think that's really cool because now now you have control over what profiles you have in the actual core build of it and it keeps it lean and mean, right? If I don't need, for example, Panasonic, I don't need any Fuji or Pentex, why install it? And that's why Aftershot is so clean. The install is like 400 megs compared to two gigabytes almost for Lightroom and that's why it's so much quicker. Now what I did is I did some other tests and what I found is exporting the exact same 100 images from this dance shoot in print quality at 300 dpi, no watermarking, no nothing, everything identical. The export with Aftershot was three and a half times as quick as Lightroom. Why that is, I don't know. But whatever they're doing, Corel, inside this software, their engine, whatever it is, they're doing it right. 
multi-threading or who knows what, but whatever that special sauce is, keep doing it because it is really, really quick. And for me, we know as photographers, time is money, right? We need to bang this stuff out as fast as possible, especially when we're doing a lot of images. Like if you're doing a wedding and you have, let's say, 1200 images and it normally would take you let's say 15 minutes to export if it does it in five minutes instead of 15 that's just rock solid man i love that right so if you guys are using the aftershot 3 or aftershot 3 pro let's say i'm using it every day so if you have any questions or you want some how to's or tips tricks or whatever it is let me know go down in the comments below ask your questions and if multiple people have the exact same question either i'll answer it in the comments or i'll actually do a vlog video on it and i'll show you exactly how to do whatever that is so if you haven't yet downloaded your free copy of aftershot 3 go ahead and do so. Like I said in the other videos, you just subscribe to the channel, go down into the description area, click on the link that takes you over to Corel. From there, they're gonna ask you for your first name, last name, maybe your email address, and that's it. They will actually license the software to you. You will own it from that day forward. If you wanna upgrade to the professional version like what I use, go ahead and do so. It's like 50% off they're giving you. It is definitely worth it. So in closing, I wanna give you like a star rating. What do I think about this, right? So as far as the UI goes, I think I would give it a three star. They still have some work to do. It's a little bit uh, kludgy here and there. They need to spit polish that, like I said just slightly but that is not as important as the performance and if we do a star rating on performance I will give that five out of five stars absolutely hands down this thing is fast and number three when it comes to actual value five out of five also the software itself you can pick up for 69 79 dollars for the professional version you can get this version for 40 bucks which i'm giving to you for free and how it compares to lightroom is literally either the same or in my personal opinion i think it's better in a lot of instances especially when it comes to performance so that's really it guys i hope you enjoyed these last four videos that i did in regards to aftershot 3 to answer your question what can you guys use as an alternative to lightroom is there something well this is my personal opinion as to what i'm using that i think is the best out there as of today Hopefully you liked, like I said, the content. If you did, throw me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to head over to my storefront over at jchristina.com where I have a lot of the photography tools that I have invented specifically for photographers like you. Check them out. And finally, subscribe, 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 and you'll get all of my content immediately when it comes out. So that's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.